We now go inside out as SNY NBA insider Ian Begley joins us from Madison Square Garden and a second straight home loss to a team under 500. And this one was really disappointing because the Knicks were never really in it. 16 threes for Washington. Ian, how were the, how were the Wizards able to get so many good looks beyond the arc? Well, Tom Thibodeau talked about just not great closing out by the Knicks, not great ball pressure, allowing Washington to get what it wanted on the perimeter. And Jalen Brunson, you know, the Wizards come out 14-3 out of the gate. Jalen Brunson said that he felt like the Knicks should have known that they'd beaten this Washington team in Washington a few days ago. So they should have known that Washington was going to come out tonight and really try to get off to a fast start. He didn't feel like they matched Washington's intensity early on and then you get Washington going you give those guys confidence and you see how it goes Amen. Uh, Mitchell Robinson played a little bit more than nine minutes before leaving because of a sprained thumb uh, no excuses for this kind of effort but what impact did his absence have. Huge huge I mean Isaiah Hartenstein Jericho Sims both man the center position for the Knicks but you look in that fourth quarter particularly after Sims fouled out I think Washington had something like 12 offensive rebounds in that quarter so any type of comeback the Knicks were trying to mount was muted by those offensive rebounds now we don't know a lot about Mitchell Robinson's injury now but it was serious enough for him to sit out the final three quarters of this game the Knicks are going to do more tests on Robinson tomorrow but you know if you lose Robinson for any period of time it's a big blow for this Knicks team because he is such an important part of the Knicks defense which was really the backbone of their strong play of late. All right, Ian, big picture question here, and it's something we've talked about frequently, the lack of production from the bench leading to heavy minutes. How is Tom Thibodeau responding to questions about that heavy workload for the Knicks' top players? Yeah, he called the media the minutes police uh, earlier this evening when we were asking some questions about minutes, and he referenced the idea that the Knicks don't have anybody in the top 20 in the NBA in minutes played, and he talked about how the Knicks handle rest days, days between games. Even if they're practicing, they're going to give their big minutes guys some time off, give them time to recover. Uh, but look, you, you see with your eyes, it's up to you to judge for yourself if this team is dragging or not. One thing worth noting, since the Knicks went to that nine man rotation early December they do have a few guys in the top 20 in minutes per game so it's just something to keep an eye on and as you see this team continue to struggle at home 11 and 13 after the loss to Washington you wonder if they need a boost off the bench as you approach this trade deadline here in early February you know Ian your answer has me curious here do the members of the minutes police carry badges was Tibbs ready to give you guys badges for that. <laughs> <laughs> we were joking around in the press box. We should show up with badges. I said, maybe I'm going to write up a citation and leave it on the press conference table for Tibbs. But I don't think he would have t found the humor in that after this tough loss to Washington. No, no humor after this one. Ian Begley, not only our SNY insider, but a member of the Minutes Police. And you can get more Nick info from Ian on the putback <laughs> Thursday at 1 p.m. on our SNY digital channels. Ian, thanks for joining us from the world's most famous arena.